Well, this is obviously a fruitful discussion. Um, so in my exploration in a variety of ways, plus having a major uh, diabetes, curing diabetes natural program, I'd say two things. I was a fruitarian for a year, uh, <clears throat> and I just didn't feel I was quite where I should be. And I'll explain more about that tomorrow when I give a talk on how to individualize your diet. And after that, I switched to my Rainbow Green Live food cu cuisine approach. And at the age of 60, I did 601 push-ups. And there was a big difference between being on fruit and not being on fruit. OK, that's a little point. I also <clears throat> tried another fruitful study, which is studying all the research on fruit and blood sugar. And what I saw in the literature, and there wasn't that much, maybe eight papers at the time, is that blueberries, bilberries, which are good for vision too, and green apples were the only foods that didn't raise the blood sugar. So this is something to keep in mind. Now, we're all unique, and in my work where we heal 61% of type 2 diabetics, non-insulin dependent, in three weeks, we don't have fruit. For, uh, because I saw that it's still, we're looking at people taking their blood sugars four times a day. We're looking very closely, and I saw that fruit didn't really, wasn't even those three is not what I wanted to, to have to get optimal healing. Now, that's not the same thing as marginal uh, healing. So um, I don't let people on our program do any fruit uh, until their blood sugar is steadily under a 100. Now, optimum is 70 to 85, but steadily under 100 for three months. And then I take them off some of the supplements I have for that. And then they have to go six months with a blood sugar under 100. Now, I had one person who was a classic uh, type 1 diabetes, just to make a point, and then pass it down to Brian and Anne-Marie. And um, he healed, uh, and his fasting blood sugar was running around 88. And then he thought he'd be a little clever. This is a few years down the line. Like, he's healed now for years. And he started adding a little fruit to his diet, and his blood sugar started to go up. I said, what are you doing? You know, because I check in with people. I said, okay, stop, see what happens. And then his blood sugar went down. There's a little bit more to it than talking about glycemic indexes. And the final point I want to make, and this is about cancer, is we know that glucose, cancer cells love glucose 10 times more than non-cancer cells. Point two, is cancer cells love fructose 10 times more than they love glucose. Think about that. So the research that I've studied, because when we talk talking about Alzheimer's and so forth, which we'll do later, really makes the point that fructose from fruit is uh, literally 10 times more inflammatory to the brain, and particularly the glia cells of the brain, which are the messengers that go through the brain cleaning it up. So those are just some insights where I, particularly if somebody has cancer, just there's no food. Don't, we're not going to have that discussion. And for the treatment of diabetes, they have to be less than 100 for six months before they can have their blueberries, bilberries, and green apples. Yeah, and so I agree. And I agree with all because, you know, we're all in different stages of our life. And as the Institute is now 64 years, we've gone from big dangling tables of fruit for breakfast to less and every day having it. And now we serve it twice a week. And as so many guests find is that we're we are actually supporting and suggesting that they don't eat any fruit for some time, depending on what's going on. But as you know, in a laboratory, if I take any bacteria, any virus, cancer cell, 
and I put it in a uh, in a uh, in vitro, and I add sugar. They all love it. They're all gonna grow like crazy, and so that just tells you that that I'm feeding it. I'm feeding any virus, bacteria, fungus, mold, parasite, and cancer on top of it. So. You know, f for our guests, it's all about being educated. And if you're educated, it's still really hard to stay off fruit because it's like people are grasping that that's one thing they know. <laughs> it's one thing that we thought that we could do. And then we're told, no, it's not a good idea for you right now. It will come back. And eventually, 15% of your diet can be fruit. Well, so. How do I get off the addiction that I'm going to have then? So with green juices, have you know, if you tried wheatgrass, it really fills you up. We drink two ounces of wheatgrass twice a day. And boy, is that sweet. And there's no sugar. So that, that glucose that's in there is feeding your brain, like you said, every cell in your body. You're drinking juices made of greens, of sprouts, sunflower, pea sprouts, celery, cucumber, parsley, any leafy green. And that keeps you away from the fruit for the time, especially for the time that we tell you, stay out of it. Let's not feed any more of your infections. So it's worked. And you know, for us, we live in the time we're in. So we went from dangling breakfast tables with every fruit possible to now only twice a week, and that's only for a few that we consider are, are healthy enough to have that. So, you know, it's about being truthful, and it's not about making people feel good. It's about being truthful and using the experience that we have and like Gabriel have, especially with diabetes, and you know, we deal with so many people from all over the world, and instead of being nice and you know, trying to pamper them, we are here to be truthful and to give the advice that we find, and we live in the time we're in. This is a different time, thank you.